This gun was graciously provided by airsplat.com. If you want to know where to purchase this product for yourself, check the direct link down below in the video information. Hey guys, Jarek here, and welcome to my review of the JLS Beretta RX4 Storm. JLS's decision to make an Airsoft RX4 is kind of odd. Now JLS does have a history of making unique firearms before anyone else. After all, they were the first people to make a SCAR and F2000. But the RX-4 is an even stranger choice, because the real RX-4 is a semi-automatic only civilian AR. There was never any military model, and it never fired in full auto. Aside from the external look of the RX-4, nothing about it really stands out. It's just a semi-automatic, gas-operated AR firing a 223 with a rotating bolt. It's part of the Beretta Storm family, including the PX-4 Storm pistol and the CX-4 Storm carbine. Interestingly enough, Beretta never actually manufactured the RX-4. Benelli did, but that's still not that strange because Beretta has owned Benelli since 1983. You might actually know the RX-4 under a different name, the Benelli MR1, which is virtually identical. When you first get your RX-4, it'll come in a low quality box, standard cardboard covering with a really low quality styrofoam inside that just makes a complete mess, flakes all over the place, will get all over your gun, and really you should just throw it away when you're done, and entirely ruin the environment. Inside of the box is an instruction manual that is kind of useless because it doesn't have a takedown guide, which is almost needed since this gun is built so strange. Also inside of the box is a pretty good 9.6 volt mini type battery, an unjamming rod, a low quality trickle charger, and some low quality .2s. Use the 9.6 volt all you want, throw the rest away. Of course you also get your RX-4 and the 300 round high capacity M4 styled magazine. This magazine seemed to feed flawlessly and really there's nothing more to talk about. It's just a standard M4 mag that seems to work fine. As such, the RX-4 is M4 magazine compatible, however this gun will not accept mid-cap magazines. The good news is there are modifications to make this gun accept mid-caps, but you're gonna have to go through those modifications to begin with, which is kind of a downer, but really not a big deal. Just do some googling and you'll find a solution fairly quickly. Before I continue on with this review, I find it very important to say that JLS is a company that does not exist anymore. They closed down years ago. So with that said, the RX-4 is actually discontinued. There's no more new RX-4s being made. So all the RX-4s out there are all there is ever going to be. That said, Airsplat actually has a large surplus of RX-4s that just never sold, which is how I got mine. But once all of those are sold and gone, your only hope is to buy a used one from somewhere else. Now let's go back to the review of the RX-4. The mold of the RX-4 has a mag release on both sides of the gun, but one of them is a phony and does not work. The working mag release is on the right hand side, making reloading feel a little bit unorthodox for a right handed user. The safety is very similar to that of a Remington 870. When the safety is pushed outwards towards the bolt, the trigger is locked and you cannot fire. Push it in and you can fire. The selector switch is probably the strangest thing I have seen on this gun. The real RX-4 didn't fire full auto, so I guess they had to put it somewhere. The selector switch is right in front of the trigger guard. Push it up, it's on full auto. Pull it down, it's on semi-automatic. This is actually very easy to access and worked perfectly fine. Amusingly enough, the placement of the controls on this weapon make this gun extremely left-handed user friendly. If anything, this gun is better for left-handed users than right-handed users because of the placement of the mag release. As for the external quality of this weapon, it's very good yet questionable at the same time. Let me explain. The upper receiver is made out of diecast metal, and the rest of the gun seems to be made out of what I assume is ABS plastic. You'd be able to fool me into thinking it was polymer. It feels very solid and sort of has a rubberized matte finish to it. This gun is extremely comfortable to hold, and this is really hard to explain without you actually picking it up yourself. But at the same time, the reason I say it's questionable is because there are huge seam lines on the back of the gun and underneath it. Now this doesn't really seem to be a big deal, you don't really notice it while you're holding it or anything, but that's why I said it seems questionable. The quality is a little bit higher than what you would expect from a Chinese made gun. Basically, it's fine and you shouldn't have to worry about it breaking. The battery compartment on this gun is one of the best I've seen out of any AEG. Simply unscrew a metal piece that slips over the barrel and your entire forend comes off the gun. This whole foregrip is your battery space. It is huge. Now it's made for a mini type to slip in between these plastic slots in the foregrip, 
but there's so much space I can guarantee you it will fit a much larger battery, especially with a little bit of modification. Unfortunately, since there is so much space, the mini type will rattle around, but you can always fix this on your own. This sort of battery space is exactly what I want companies to aim for. Not just because there's a lot of space for the battery itself, but because there's a lot of experimental lenience to where you can modify your weapon and do some really interesting things without having to worry about whether the battery will still fit or not. The RX4 stock is a 4 position sliding stock with a rubberized butt pad that I found to be extremely comfortable in my shoulder and to use as a cheek rest. A lot of people were worried about the stock being wobbly, but I've held quite a few RX4s and none of their stocks wobbled. The hop of unit can be exposed by pulling back the bolt, which I have a mini rant I need to get out of the way. Why in the world is the charging handle so far back on the bolt? There is no way this would be able to chamber a 223. It'd barely be able to chamber a 22. The correct placement of the charging handle should be at the very front of the bolt. Regardless, pulling back the bolt is how you expose the wheel to adjust your hop-up unit. This hop-up unit seems to be very similar to that of a two-pieced M4 styled hop-up unit. The upper portion does seem to be compatible, but the lower portion seems to be proprietary, which is a little bit disappointing, but this hop-up unit does seem to be effective and does its job very well. The flash hider uses 14mm positive threading, so most of your suppressors and whatnot will not work with this gun unless they're clockwise or you have a clockwise to counterclockwise threading adapter. The sights on this gun are fully adjustable, very easy to assess, and overall are great sights. However, if you didn't wish to use these sights, you could just put any optic you wished on the full length top rail. This gun does also feature rails on the left side, the right side, and the bottom. The rails are a little bit small, but they're fully usable. When chronoing the RX-4 with a 9.6 volt and 0.2 gram BBs, this gun was incredibly consistent around 350 feet per second. You wouldn't want it shooting much hotter or much weaker than that. 350 works perfectly fine in woodland, and some CQB places might let you take it into their CQB facility. The rate of fire, however, was a little bit lacking. With the 9.6 volt, the gun was averaging 700 rounds per minute. With the 9.6 volt, you should be averaging closer to, say, 850 to 1000 rounds a minute, and 700's a little bit on the low side. It's not absolutely terrible though, and you can definitely use it perfectly fine. That's not to say I wouldn't worry about upgrading it to make the rate of fire a little bit more respectable. I've handled quite a few RX-4s, and I know what they're capable of in terms of accuracy. This unit unfortunately had an imperfection on the hop-up nub, so every BB had a slight downspin, messing with the accuracy, making it very difficult to show how good this gun actually is. What I can tell you is that the RX-4 is accurate at up to 150 feet away, Right out of the box, it's most definitely skirmishable. The gearbox in the RX-4 is rather unique. It's almost like a Frankenstein blend between a version 2 and a version 3. When you first open your gearbox, you want to clean out all that Chinese grease and re-lube it yourself. Looking into the gearbox, the gears seem to be of pretty decent quality and I don't think you'd ever have to worry about them stripping, but like I've said, most of the parts seem to be either version 2 or version 3 compatible. Like say, the spring guide is a version 3 styled spring guide. The bushings themselves are 6mm metal bushings, and the only part of this that I see that is proprietary is the tappet plate, which does kind of suck because if that breaks, you're screwed. All in all, the quality of the gearbox, although it is a very strange gearbox, does seem to be decent, and I don't think you'd ever have to worry about anything inside of this breaking. It seems to be perfectly reliable. Final conclusions of this gun. Well, it's weird, but luckily for this gun, I love me some weird. If you're like me, you're getting tired and just bored of all of these M4s everywhere. You want something new, you want something unique, and this RX-4 is definitely going to give you that unique factor. It's not all pretty. It does have some proprietary parts, it does have some downsides that I have warned you of. But in general, it's built reliably enough, in general, it performs pretty well, and in general, it just sort of works. And it does have a ton of upside for possible modifications, so you can turn this gun into something even better. And at the very least, you might want to even just look at this gun for collection purposes. I'm definitely keeping mine because it's discontinued, it's gone, you can't find it anymore, the company that made it is completely out of business. And in general, I just love the way this gun looks, it's different, and that's what I really like about it. So if you're still looking into this gun, you have a dead set in your mind, you want the RX-4, Go right ahead, it's worth your money, but the one thing I can say is that if you're looking for a gun that's just going to work out of the box and be reliable for a long time, 
this probably isn't the gun for you. This is definitely the gun for the more experienced player that knows what he's doing with gearboxes and knows how to modify his gun a little bit and really wants to tweak with it to make it the best thing he possibly can. If that's the case, I'm immediately going to recommend this gun for you so we can see something a little bit different than just another M4 out on the field. So that about sums up my review of the JLS Beretta RX4 Storm. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.